QUAX88995. This car just came in today. Let's take a walk around it. And uh, this car is called an ambulance car. Pretty uh, unique type of a rail car. So as the name implies, ambulance cars are made to uh, pick up and uh, pick up and haul other types of rail cars right on top of it. They have those uh, uh, built-in truck bolsters to set rail cars in. So this is a uh, kind of a different car. So the concept behind a ambulance car is uh, here's a there's a rail car over there. So let's say. Uh, that rail car over there uh, gets in an accident and and needs to be repaired, right? So and let's say it's too damaged to go back on its own wheels So they would get that rail car and they'd pick it up and they would set it on that truck bolster That truck bolster is movable. So it slides back and forth So they would load that rail car, you know, they'll load that rail car It can be a tank car. It can be another flat car. Whatever kind of car it is. They'll take it and they'll load it down on this uh, then they'll strap it down and then they'll take the wheels off that side and load them up way over there on the far side This is an 89 foot flat car, so it can haul just about any other kind of car except for a, another 89 foot flat car Actually, I, I don't you know. I don't think they could haul an 89 foot flat car on this, but um, I guess I'm really not sure I've never uh, Well those tracks go pretty far. I'm thinking Yeah, I guess they, they could so, since uh, That's right above or pretty close to the I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they could or not, but uh, but it's pretty low profile. Uh, there's there's a lot of cool, unique things about this car as a rail car. Uh, this car is called a low level, as compared to what we typically see. We typically see standard level cars. As we walk through this, um, this car has some brand new wheels. It has a brand new wheel set over here and another brand new wheel set on the other side. Uh, still has stickers on them that they're in great shape. Um, so this is called a, uh, a low level car, meaning that usually on rail cars, on, on our traditional flat cars, the deck is above that coupler hump. See that hump right there? We call it the coupler hump. Uh, that entire area, the, the deck would be to the top of that coupler hump. Now, as an ambulance car, and you know, when they have these rail cars sitting on top of them, they want to try to lower that profile of the complete rail car. So these, so so not only is it a low-level car, the other thing that's kind of unique that makes this car a little bit lower than some of the other cars are the wheels. Those wheels are 28-inch wheels. Yeah, I know it's pretty odd to see 28-inch wheels anymore. Um, usually. Uh, they're, they're, they're much larger wheels, either 33s or 36s, so to see 28s is kind of neat. They're kind of, kind of cute little wheels, um, uh, but it helps lower the profile, so it works really good for, for this car. And this is still, I believe, a 70-ton truck set. I believe their uh, the roller bearings are 6x11s. Yeah, they're, they're 6x11 roller bearings, so that's a 70-ton uh, truck set, so you can put 140,000 pounds of weight on this car. So that's what's kind of weird about this one is just, well not weird, um, a lot of cars are, are, are low level. A lot of auto racks will, will be low level cars like this. So um, the thing that makes this uh, not so great to use as a bridge is now your beam. Let me see if I can get a little lower. So usually we want plenty of meat uh, all the way down on that rail car because that center sill is what's, what's going to give us the most structural capacity for a bridge but you can see right right here there's going to be kind of a hinge point where the where the, the actual center sill is, is kind of shallow so if we were to cut that cut that hump off it makes that structural member kind of shallow uh, so this will this will be good as a bridge for light stuff maybe uh, pipes or or cattle or maybe people um, it actually will work pretty well if we put the abutments way back over here, but you know from here to the very end you have about 12 feet So we're, we're losing uh, quite a bit of length there uh, But other than that, oh the other kind of uh, Interesting thing on this car is that this is this is a sliding center cell uh, on a 90-foot rail car that was um, that's kind of 
different. Uh, I don't think I've ever saw a 90 foot rail car with a sliding center sill. And you can't tell from right here. Let me go to a different area. Right here. Oh yeah, look at that. See that? So you have a so the the outside center sill has been cut, cut away here. It looks like there was some repairs done at uh, some point. Um, so usually on a traditional flat car, um, you would have a you wouldn't have that inside center sill. So that's inside center sill actually slides. You can see actually there's a good so you can see there's a hole in this. Let's see if I can squeeze in here. See that there's a. Uh, whole complete different center sill. So that center sill inside slides and the outside one here is stationary. So that's uh, that's a little different. Actually that's a lot different. Um, underneath the rail car looks pretty good. Single I-beam for longitudinal cross member. Got plenty of pretty good size transverse or latitudinal cross members. Rail car looks to be in good shape. Looks like the center sill is, you can see there, oh, that's kind of interesting. Look at that. Oops, my finger's in the way, sorry. See that the uh, center sill is split there. That is pretty interesting. That is pretty interesting. I can't see, so I'm gonna stick my camera in there and see. I look forward to seeing this video myself to see what uh, what there is to see inside there. All right, uh, we can see there's a uh, some reinforcement right inside there on the bottom. That's uh, it's going to stiffen up this rail car quite a bit. Condition is overall pretty decent on the structural part of it. All right. So, um, kind of a different rail car. So you can see this uh, this truck bolster is on wheels, so it can it can move. I imagine it can move anywhere from from way over there. That track goes all the way down. It'll go down way over there. I've actually never used a uh, ambulance car myself. The concept is pretty cool. And this side over here is where they would load the uh, the wheels at. And uh, as in any work the railroad does, they usually grab whatever's nearby to, to do some welding. So all this stuff is is welded on here pretty well, right? Um, and it's always interesting to see what they use here. Uh, Usually they'll use an ambulance when cars are derailed or there's been an accident and So it's kind of interesting that they use these here. These are called tie plates as in railroad tie plate T-I-E tie plate So they took tie plates And they cut them up and they uh, Swallowed them on all over the deck That's just kind of interesting a tie plate. Let me show you what a tie plate is I'll go over here to uh this track over here. Okay, so let's see if we can see it. Right, you can see uh, it's a tie plate is what ties the railroad tie to the tie. So you got the railroad rail. I'm sorry, it ties the railroad rail to the railroad tie. So that's what their tie plate. So the ties get nailed down um, to. Well, you know what? I shouldn't really say. I don't know how they work. I just know where they're at. Uh, they, they they adapt the uh, the rail to the uh, to the railroad tie. What goes on first? I really don't know. I've never applied them, but you can see them. Whenever you see a spike, a railroad spike, uh, going down in the ground or into the tie, it's going through a tie plate. Okay. So that's what a tie plate is. And we have plenty of those on this car. Okay, there's a coupler there, looks pretty good. There's the deck, so it does have a solid steel deck. We'll have to clean it up and see uh, 
how good we can get it cleaned up. A little bit different configuration. Let's take a look underneath the rail car, look for um, any damage. Bottom of the rail car looks good. Right. There's that brand new wheel. You can see that wheel has all the markings on it still. Looks like this car's had some, you can see that new brand new cotter key right there as well. So this car has been worked on here recently. And uh, so if this car itself was involved in an accident, you would be indicative of damage here. This corner looks good. That corner over there looks good. I don't see any coupler bypass damage. So that looks good. We'll see if this car's been dropped at all. And that'll be indicative right here, at that little point right here, if it was derailed. If there's a track, you can't see that there, but wow, look at that. That is pretty cool. Okay, sides look great. We'll check uh, this side over here, the center sill for for damage. See if it's been dropped or derailed, and you can see that looks fantastic. So no damage there. Okay, and you can see this corner looks fantastic as well. Alright, that's all there is to it.